So by now you might have heard of this thing called Team Seas. It's this huge campaign set up by Mr. Beast and Mark Robert to generate money to clean up our oceans. And this is something I truly care about as there is way too much trash floating around and polluting our seas. Especially one of my favorite animals, the sea turtle, is a highly endangered species and it needs our help. And that's why I created this not so pristine underwater scene and show you guys how to do it. And I will donate all the ad revenue I make from this video to the cause. And if this is not enough, I will also add some money of myself to make sure that at least 20 pounds gets deleted from the ocean. So watch this video, share with your friends, watch it to the end and watch as many advertisements as you can and help me put more money in Team Seas. So I've opened up the base file and as always it comes with a few things already set up for you guys. It's got a path set up, it's got a camera and it's got several trash objects already imported and it has materials added to it so you can easily work with it. Okay, so let's import our model. So import FBX and choose the sea turtle model. I'll put the link in the description. And let's make sure it's over here and rename our layer to sea turtle. Now let's head over to the object properties, over to the keyframes, which is the green areas and right click all three of them and hit clear keyframes. Now let's set the scale to something like 75. And if you've done everything correctly, you should be able to move this turtle around while still having the animation work. Now let's zero out the location and rotation for our turtle here. And as you can tell, the animation ends after 180 frames, um, which is not something that we want because the animation uh, for this video is longer. So let's pull this window up and open up the nonlinear animation window. Click the push down action button, and this will create our animation action. Duplicate it with Shift D and line these up behind each other. And now if we play this back, we should get a looping animation and it's working fine. Now we should select the main rig and with the main rig selected, let's head on over to the object constraints tab and add in a follow path constraint. Now for the path, let's select our Bezier curve. And next we want to open up the curve menu. So select the curve, go into the curve menu and into path animation. Now on the first keyframe of our animation, we want to set the evaluation time for our path animation at one and hit I to create a keyframe. Now on the final keyframe of our animation, let's go over here and set it to 250 and hit I again. So this will basically mean we will take 500 frames of time to travel 250 frames down our curve here, creating a nice smooth and slow motion. Now the turtle is traveling down our path, but it's not angled in the right direction. Let's just make sure we select our keyframes, hit T and choose linear interpolation for constant movement and hit control E and choose ease in and ease out to generate some easing at the beginning and end. Now, Let's select our turtle rig and go over to the object constraint again and choose follow curve, which will make our turtle line up nicely with the curve and move along as it should. Uh, this will automatically fix the problem we had before with the turtle moving sideways. Now I do want to generate some random motion on the Y axis. So something like this, and we can easily do that by adding a keyframe, a single keyframe that is on the Y rotation axis, opening up the graph editor and going down to the Y Euler rotation, making sure it is selected, opening up the modifiers tab and adding in a noise modifier. Now let's set the scale to something like 250 and the strength to something like 1.5 and we should get some nice random rotation on the Y axis. Now let's add in a cube, put it in the right collection and rename it volume. And this will be the basis for our ocean. Scale it up a bunch and also go into top view, scale up again and hit shift set to exclude the Z layer until you get something similar to this. Now, before we do anything with the material, let's make sure our camera is tracking our sea turtle. So select our camera and go over to the object constraints again and add a track to object constraint. Select the sea turtle as the target and set the influence to 0.5. Now, if you play this back, you will see it's following along ever so slightly and uh, not too much. So it's not looking chaotic, but it does follow along nicely like it's an actual moving camera. Now, next up, we want to add our material here. So add a new material. Let's rename it to volume and remove our principled BSDF. Now in the volume, add a principled volume shader. And for the settings here, we're just going to change a few things. First of all, let's go into the camera view and into rendered mode and everything should be black. And that's because of two things. First of all, our lighting is non-existent. And second of all, the density of our volume is way too high. First of all, let's add in a sun lamp and just rotate it ever so slightly. It doesn't matter in which general direction. And um, if you set the strength up to 10 or something, you will still see it's dark. 
Now, if we crack down the density of our volume to zero, you will see something is happening with the light. However, the volume is just blocking it out. So let's set our volume here to a very low number, something like 0.02 and change the color to a bluish tint. Now the sun lamp can go to something like 50, so it will generate a lot of strength here. And what we need next is we need a lighter top and a darker bottom. And to achieve this, we need to edit our volumetric material again. And that's actually very easy to do by increasing the anis anisotropy, anisotropy. I don't know how to pronounce that. Do something like 0.75 to automatically do this for us. Now in the basis, this will be our underwater scene. So a bit of density, a bit of strength on our sun and the anisotropy up. And if you rotate around it, you will see it's actually starting to look like an underwater scene. However, we need some light shafts. And to do that, we are going to create a light cookie with a plane. So shift a plane, put it above the volume and scale it up until it covers it entirely. Now, um, if you go into render view again, everything will be black again. That's because the light is being blocked and we need to create some kind of cutout to fix this. So add a new material and let's just rename this cookie. I'm also going to rename the plane cookie and I'm going to add in a noise texture and a color ramp. Plug these into the alpha of your principal BSDF. And if we go into material preview with the plane solo, you can see what's going on here. I'm just going to decrease the detail and decrease the roughness. And now I want to duplicate the noise texture and plug it before the mapping node. And that's all we need to do. And this is just some random texture here. And I'm going to rotate it on the X axis and animate that. So we get a moving texture, which will simulate the water moving and the light passing through it. So on the first keyframe, let's hit I on the rotation value in the mapping node. And on the last frame, let's type in 20 on the X and just hit I again. And if we select all the keyframes now, hit T and choose linear interpolation. We play this back. We get a very nice slow, but still steadily moving um, texture. And if you now go back into render view, you will see all these amazing looking light shafts and they are also animating, of course. Now our ocean is still looking a bit bland. So let's work on the next step and that's the particle systems. So select our volume object here and let's head on over to the particle system settings and add in a new particle system. I'm just going to name this one cap because this will be the bottle caps and let's start changing some of these settings. So for the number, I'm going to set it to hundred frame start and frame end obviously at one because I want them to spawn in at the start of our video. The lifetime needs to match the length of our animation. So 500 in this case for the velocity, I'm going to set it to zero because we don't want any movement and rotation obviously needs to be randomized completely. And for the render, I'm going to set it to object and choose the cap object. Now I'm going to set the scale to something like a 0.6 and the scale randomness to maybe a 0.1. And this will generate all these nice looking caps. Turn off the gravity in field weight so it doesn't fall down when you're actually playing this back and make sure you check on object rotation so it inherits the animation I created for you guys. Now you want to emit this from the volume. So not the faces, but the volume. And we should be getting all of these nice looking caps in there. Now, because we do want some movement, I am going to add in a turbulent force field. So add it in with shift A and I'm just going to move it to the main collection and set the strength to something like a 0.1. And if you play this back, you do get some movement going ever so slightly like it's actual drifting trash. Now let's rename our particle settings to something you can remember. I'm just going to name it this one and that's done. Now add in a new particle system, which I'm going to name straw because I will use the straw object here. Use the same setting. So this one and click the two icon to duplicate it. Now I'm going to change a few settings again, especially the seed, the amount, which can go down in this case. And for the object, obviously I won't use the cap, but I'll use the straw. I'm going to change the skill here and I think everything else can stay as is. And the straw object is looking nice as well. If I turn off overlays and in render view, you can see they are both in there and they are looking fine. I'm just going to change the seed for the straws until I get one that I like. And also the amount just fiddling around with it until the result is looking good. All right, so I'm happy with this. I'm just going to add another particle system and this one can be the bag. So I'm just going to rename it. I'm going to use the same particle settings, but making sure to duplicate them again and just changing around some of the parameters with the number. Uh, in this case, using the bag object and changing the skill to something like a five or so. And the skill randomness can go up as well to 0.5. And I'm going to 
change the seed until I'm happy with what I'm seeing. And I think this one is looking fine. Now for the fourth trash particle system, I'm going to use the cans. So duplicate everything again and set the number to something like 25. Change it from object to collection and use the cans collection. Make sure to check on pick random. Set the skill to about three. And now just fiddle around with the seed again until you get something that you're happy with. Making sure to change everything. And I think this one is pretty good. Yeah, this one is pretty good. So I'm going to go with this one. Now for the final particle system, this is called C particles, and this will be a different one. I'm just going to um, reuse the same settings again. So this one and making sure to duplicate them. Set the number to something very high, like 20,000. This will add a lot of caps, uh, which is looking pretty cool, but it's not what we want. So change the object from cap to C particle. Set the skill to something like a 0.02, skill randomness to 1. And now we will get just a bunch of these light reflecting particles, which are emulating just the regular particles you will see when you're underwater. So let's render out a single frame and take it into compositing. Now I will just walk you through all of these nodes that I've already set up for the compositing here. They are also in the base file, so don't worry, you don't have to uh, replicate this. Now, first of all, I took the image and the noisy image, which is the undenoised one, and I combined those to add in some extra grain, which I think fits the underwater scene. Now, also, I do think that underwater scenes should be less defined. So um, I added a blur node with a uh, X and Y factor of two, just to take off these unrealistically sharp edges in our uh, final render. Now, then we have the regular color balance node, which is just to change the color. Um, uh, obviously, you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, I think something like this works, like a sea green color. Uh, but you can also change it to a more bluish color if that's uh, what you prefer. So something like this, for example. Now, the RGB curves node, obviously, is just there to add in some extra contrast. And I've also set the exposure up with, uh, by a factor of one because I thought the original render was too dark. So just adding in the exposure fixes that. And then we have a glare node, which is just to add some glow around some of the highlights in our scene, which I think adds to the realism of the end result. And finally, of course, we have the lens distortion node just with the dispersion set to a very low number, so 0.02, uh, just to add some chromatic aberration around things which I think adds to the realism as well. And that brings us to the end result. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you stick around till the end because all the ad revenue I make from this video will go into the Team C's campaign. So make sure you share this video with all of your friends. Get me as much views as possible. Um, the more money I make, the more money we can uh, donate to this great, great cause. So uh, I want to thank you all for watching, for sticking around until the end. And if you did enjoy this video, then please leave a like, subscribe, and click on the bell icon for further notifications on future videos. And I hope to see you in the next one.